hey guys what's up it's fern thank you so much for joining me for another planty video today i'm gonna be talking all about my pawn plants i have not made a video like updating on these plants i don't even know if i've made another pawn video since my original diy pawn where i was putting my plants in pawn and starting this whole journey um if you haven't seen that video i'll link it for you i'm not really going to be talking a lot about like what what pawn is and the ingredients and how I made my pawn mixture. So you can go check that video out if, if you are interested in that. But if you are completely brand new to pawn, it is just a rocky substrate as you can see here. And you can use it as just like a regular medium to grow your plants in where you water it through or you can use it as semi hydro, which is what I do. Um, so I use it in a way very similar to like a LECA setup. If you're familiar with that, um, it kind of works it works through capillary action to wick moisture up to the roots. So I'm coming up to a full year now of using Pond, and I will say that I have had many different thoughts and feelings about it in that time. At first I loved it, and then I kind of got tired of it. I started running into some problems and kind of just lost interest in it. Um, and now I'm coming to a point where I'm interested in it, in it again. I want to experiment with it more and maybe switch some things up and just, just try some things out and see how it works for me. So the main issue or the one that like annoyed me the most that I was running into was algae buildup, um, which was happening on my clear vessels. This one's like pretty new, so you can't really see any on there, but it was happening on my clear vessels and it was getting so bad because most of my plants live under grow lights or like on a windowsill. And anytime you have a clear vessel and moisture, um, you're going to get algae buildup. Like that's just, that's just what happens. And it's not super harmful unless there's like a ton of it, but it's just, I don't like the way it looks. It bothers me. So a couple of times I would like take the plant out um, and then like clean out the vessel and replace the pond and repot it. And that would work for like a few weeks, but then the algae would just start building up again. So basically what I've done to combat that for the plants that it was really bad on is put socks on my plant. So if you block out the light, then you're not going to get that problem. Like there's none on these ones, um, which is amazing. So you can do this. You don't have to use a sock. This is just like easy for me. <laughs> so I did that um, and I don't really care like about aesthetics that much. So whatever but um you can do this a lot of different ways you can like paint your vessels especially if it's glass you can do like that um oh what's it called that terracotta thing where you use like baking soda or something in the paint i've always wanted to try that but just never have you can use something else around like you can use paper or just anything that blocks out the light um spray paints you know whatever as long as you're blocking out the light then that's going to prevent the algae buildup so that was like the main problem that i was really not liking and this problem isn't specific to pawn it happens with any substrate in a clear vessel it can happen with just like a potting mix with sphagnum perlite um whatever so i was just finding that it was happening on my pond plants a lot because a lot of them were in these clear vessels so since i've resolved that i'm feeling a lot more optimistic about pond because i just could not be bothered to be cleaning out that algae every few weeks you know what i'm saying and um i know that some people use hydrogen peroxide but then i've also heard that hydrogen peroxide can be detrimental because it like kills the good bacteria so I don't know, just cover cover the vessel and it's fine. <laughs> the other reason that I was not super loving pawn is because I felt like my plants weren't really growing. Like I was getting growth, but they weren't growing nearly as fast as my plants that I have in just like my regular chunky potting mix. Um, but that could be totally my fault. It could be something to do with like my fertilizing um, or my the way I've like created this mixture. It could just be because it was like the slower part of the year that I was observing a lot of this. Um, it could be a lot of reasons, but I feel like just from looking at, um, at my pond plants, I feel like I could really benefit by adding some perlite into here. And I've heard of people doing this just to make it like a little bit, um, a little bit fluffier, like less dense. Um, I feel like pond is quite dense, at least when you do like this DIY one. I, I'd be really interested to try the Lachuza one. I've just never had luck ordering from them. Um, but my version, it's like, it's very dense. So 
I do want to experiment with potting a plant and adding perlite into my pond and just seeing how it does. Maybe I'll do that today. Maybe I'll add that into this video. We'll see. I feel like that could really make a large difference and just help the roots kind of expand and breathe a little bit more. But overall, the plants that I have in pond have been doing quite well. Definitely better than LECA for me. I don't know what it is with me and LECA, but my plants were always just rotting in LECA. Um, I don't think I've ever had a plant rot in my pond mixture, which is amazing. Um, and I do fertilize with Osmo Coat. I could probably, these are probably due for, a lot of these are probably due for more fertilizer actually. Um, and I do occasionally use fertilizer water to water these. I could probably up the fertilizer now actually on all of these now that we're coming into spring. But yeah, overall everyone has done okay. They just haven't done like amazing. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't, I didn't see these results and be like, wow, like I'm gonna switch my collection over to pond because um, I definitely still prefer just like a chunky, a chunky aeroid potting mix. That being said, I'm going to walk you through all the plants that I have in pond right now and just let you know how they have been doing with it. Okay, so one of the happiest plants that I have had in pond, and this is one that I'll probably keep it in pond for a while just because it is doing so well now. Um, this is my Anthurium vitrifolium. There's a dead fungus gnat on the leaf. Um, yes, my Anthurium vitrifolium. This is one of my favorite plants. I am obsessed with this Anthurium. Um, mine is still quite young, as you can see. Um, starting to get those longer leaves, which is really awesome. This is a new one. It's still... It's still coming in, so I won't mess with it too much, but I'm very excited to see that. Um, so Anthurium have really thick roots, so I think that they are really great candidates for pawn, um, especially because they do like moisture as well. I don't know if you can see his roots in there on camera, but they are quite, quite chunky. And the way that I care for these guys is I just leave about this much water um, in the bottom of the reservoir. And then once it gets low, I just fill it back up again. And I try to maintain just having like at least, at least a little bit of water in here at all times. And then the plant can just suck it up as it sees fit. But yeah, this guy has been doing amazing. Um, I... This made me really want to try out more Anthurium in Pond. So I did actually end up just recently actually potting one of my seedlings this is one of my oh my goodness what is this magnificum and dark mama hybrid anthurium seedlings um so i literally like just did this yesterday um this is going to be in a repot with me but that's probably going to be going up after this video so you'll get to see me pot this up but um, yeah, since I've had such good luck with my Vitrifolium in Pawn, I really wanted to just try another Anthurium and see how it goes. So, so yeah, I'll keep you guys posted on how this little baby one is doing. Okay, and then my Florida Ghost. I know you guys have seen this one before. I love this plant. Um, actually, I can just take out... Oh, that's right. I just filled up the water recently. I just want to show you the roots. Can you see... Look at those roots. I repotted this plant a few weeks ago now. I did both of these, the alocasia and the Florida ghost um, because I was having the algae problem and then that's when I put the socks on. So now we're not having an algae problem anymore. But yeah, Florida ghost, this is doing amazing. Um, this is the only philodendron. Actually, these are all different genuses. That's cool. Um, yeah, so this is my, <laughs> my philodendron pawn experiment and he's doing awesome. You can see a new leaf is going to be coming out there. I was considering moving this plant to soil actually, but now that I'm just like interested in pawn <laughs> again and curious about it, um, I'm going to leave him in here for a little while longer and see how he does. But yeah, I have had absolutely no problems with this plant and pawn is doing awesome. And this is actually one of my favorite setups. So it's just two plastic cups this one has holes so the other one acts as a reservoir and it just sits in there it's so easy it's super super simple to flush through and i know some people say you don't have to flush pond like in the same way you have to flush leka but i still do like to give mine like a good rinse through um i can't really do that with these closed systems which is the thing that sucks about them so i think that this type of setup is my favorite or the self-watering which i guess i'll talk about this one next 
So this is my Hoya Sigillatus, and this is my only Hoya that I have in pawn. Um, this was just like a one leafer way back, and now it's got this, got this vine going on. There's quite a few leaves on there, which is really awesome. I'm gonna check and see if, um, wow, this is a new leaf here. That is so cool, and there's a little baby, if you can see that. This one, this is a new leaf. It's big. Oh, that's so exciting. Okay, I wanna see if you can see the roots. Yeah, this plant seems really happy in the pond, which is nice. Um, this is probably like my most low maintenance plant because it's in this self-watering thing. I can see like tiny tips of roots, but nothing. Oh yeah, I can see some roots, but nothing crazy. Um, I don't know if you'll if you'll be able to see anything, probably not. No, my camera doesn't even want to focus. Okay then, okay. Yeah, I haven't had any problems with this. Um, this lives in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet and it's starting to grow again, so that's really great. Not too much to say about it. I am curious to try another Hoya in pond though um, because that went well, which is good. And then, of course, we have my Alocasia Black Velvet. I know Alocasia are quite a popular choice for pond because they do like to stay on the moist side. Um, this Alocasia, I, I have such a hard time getting it out of the One Leaf Club, and I don't know if that is because of pond or just because of, like, it could be due to a lot of factors. Um, I have increased the fertilizer. You can see I have quite a bit of Osmo Coat in there. So I'm really curious to see if this plant starts doing better or not. I mean, he looks good right now. And I do have a corm that I want to take out of there the next time I repot. Okay, it's annoying that my camera doesn't want to focus today. There we go. There's a corm in there that I do want to remove and pot up next time. I don't know. This one is doing okay, but not amazing. I have no idea if it would do better in a different substrate. It's possible. Um, I'll have to maybe experiment one day with another alocasia. Actually, maybe when I take, when I um, grow another corm, I have a couple that are sprouting. So maybe I will try a corm in pawn and then see how that one does. But yeah, alocasia, black velvet, one leaf, vibes. And then lastly, this is quite a new one actually. This is a cutting that I potted up of my Monstera, why can I never remember what this is called? Standaliana Albo Variegata. I decided to just experiment and throw it in pond and immediately it started rooting like crazy in here. So I think that it's happy and it even has like a little growth point coming in if you can see right there. Yeah, so far this is doing awesome. I have not tried any other Monstera in Pond, but I'm definitely curious to now just because this one really seems to be loving it. And it is super low maintenance. I'm having plants in Pond, which is the nice thing. So I'm definitely willing to try out more plants in here. Okay, so I've decided that we are gonna go ahead and um, put another plant in pond, but I'm going to be adding perlite into the mix to make it a little bit fluffier and we'll see how that goes. So the plant that we are going to be potting up, I have not opened this in quite some time. Oh yeah, my Hoya Obovada cuttings. Um, these have been rooting for Oh my goodness, like probably between six and eight weeks now, coming up to a couple of months. Oh, there's baby leaves. Oh my gosh. Can you see? There is baby leaves. Oh man, I was not expecting that. How cute. Okay, so yeah, these rooted so well in sphagnum. I have another cutting of this um, in my perlite prop box and it's going way slower for some reason. Usually perlite is like the best propagation method for me, but for this Hoya Obovada, you guys, sphagnum was the way, the way to go. I seriously cannot believe that growth on the end. Are you kidding me? That is so freaking cute. Okay, I need my 
potting mat here before I get too ahead of myself. I'm really excited to see how this Hoya grows in the pond because it definitely hasn't been the fastest Hoya in just like soil for me. The mother plant is still just in soil. Um, so I'm excited to try out another, another method for this one because this is one of my favorite Hoya. Obovada is just so pretty, like such a classic Hoya. Okay, so that's the roots that we are working with. This is quite wide now, this vine. I think I might do this in a self-watering pot because I have one that just became available. Okay, the roots are smaller on this one, but I'm just gonna go for it anyways. I don't really wait for roots to be super long when I pop propagations up. I see some people wait until they're like super long and I don't know, I never do and I haven't had any problems with it, so. Okay, let me find that self-watering pot. Here it is, I just cleaned it. Um, the wick needs to go this way. Perfect, okay. So, I'm gonna move this. Oh, hopefully that's gonna fit. Yeah, it will just fit, I think. This is my pawn bin. It is getting kind of low. Whew, it's dusty. Okay. Disclaimer, you should be wearing a mask when you're dealing with perlite and all this pond dust and everything. Okay, so I feel like the amount of perlite in there is pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna try it. So I'm just gonna put some in. I think I'm gonna have to cut off the very end of this because it's just like a little bit too long. I'm gonna do that. Okay, I just made it a little bit shorter with a clean pair of scissors. There, that's perfect now. Now it will fit in there really well. And the other one, oh, this one's gonna be too long too. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna have to trim this one down too. Luckily, Hoya's root like all along the stem or the vine. Okay, so that's what it looks like and I'm just gonna fill it up. Okay, so they're all in there. Um, obviously this dust is gonna get rinsed off when I water this through, but I'm gonna go grab some of my Osmo Coat fertilizer and pop some of that in there before we water this. Okay, here it is. 
So I'm just going to put a quarter of a teaspoon in here. I've never really had problems with over fertilizing, so I'm a little less cautious than I used to be. Um, I used to just put like the tiniest specks, but now I'll put the full quarter teaspoon for this size of pot. Okay, and then we're gonna water this through. So I'm gonna rinse it, try to get some of this dust off of the leaves too. That's better. And then I'm just gonna make water, get water all the way through. And then I'm gonna set it in here and just fill it up a bit. So I want the wick, so I want the wick to be sitting in water, but I don't want the actual like plant pot to be sitting in water. So I just kind of look in there and see where it is. Um, that's pretty good actually. So I'm just gonna leave that. Um, now I just need to decide where I'm gonna put this. Okay, so for now I chose to just put it on my windowsill in my bedroom. Oh, the lighting is crazy. It's sunny out today. Um, so this is a south-facing window and um, it'll be happy here because it's getting bright light. Um, humidity is not bad in here and I'll be able to keep a close eye on it because um, I'll just, I'll see it all the time being right here. So yeah, I'm really excited to see um, how this progresses. I will definitely keep you guys posted, of course. If you guys have any more questions or any comments about Pawn, let me know. Leave them down in the description box. Actually, I would love to hear your thoughts on Pawn if you've tried it out, um, especially if you've made your own. Do you have any tips or tricks? Let me know. This is all just trial and error. That's the beautiful thing about plants. We just get to experiment and have fun and it's not that serious. So that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe for more planty content and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.